Charleston and San Antonio. Shannon Messer. I'm uh, here, uh, fly shop manager for the Orvis section here at Black Rock Outdoors in Silva. Also a commercial fly tire and a local guide. If you'd have told me 20 years ago I'd be doing this, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But here we are, which is great. I'm so happy. Yeah, I was uh, born and raised in Haywood County, specifically Waynesville. I uh, bought uh, property in Jackson County 16 years ago. Been a resident of Jackson County ever since. Uh, so this is home for me now. Oh, I guess I always fished as a kid. It's just one of those things for me. It's just natural. Uh, you know, why, why does somebody want to go run every day? It's just something that, I don't know, it, it just is. But for me, it's fishing. Where I grew up out in Waynesville, there's a creek running right through our yard. So I could go out there any time I wanted to fish. I'd just go out there and fish. There's trout born in that stream. I go catch, you know, um, <clears throat> with just a little rod out there. I just walk up the neighborhood catching, catching fish. This is the headwaters for uh, Raven Fork. Um, what you have here, this is straight fork. On up the road, there's a round bottom horse camp. You can hike into Inlow Creek and also over to the Raven, Ravens Forks headwaters and they converge down there where we turn up this direction here. And that's all. Smoky Mountain National Park in here. Just about every time out between, you know, three of us, we would usually, one of us would catch, uh, you know, at least one. You know, pretty pretty fish, but um, not seeing the numbers like we used to. The brook trout um, population decreasing. It's really, if you'd have to go back, I'd probably say before my lifetime. The brook trout is the only trout that's native to to the area. Years ago, with all the logging practices and those type things, that really destroyed that brook trout habitat. So what they did to offset that was obviously they brought in a brown trout, which is not native to the area and also a rainbow trout, which is not native to the area. And they use those fish to stock these mountain streams. How do we look, you know, what does a brown trout do to the brook trout's habitat? What does a rainbow trout do, do to a brook trout's habitat? And how do they coexist in the stream? Uh, my name is Jake Rash, and I'm the Cold Water Research Coordinator for the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Through my job, I'm, I'm able to work with the trout uh, within the state of North Carolina. Our wild, self-sustaining brook trout populations have been there a long time. Many of them are lower numbers than they used to be. Factors that are affecting uh, fish populations. Um, Certainly when you think about brook trout uh, with the intensive logging practices, um, a lot of those populations were lost or impacted. Also, whirling disease, gill ice, I mean these are all various symptoms of you know the bigger aquatic nuisance species picture where things that, that aren't, aren't native uh, or, or natural to a system can, can come in and, uh, and have potential impacts. We still have a, a pretty big stock trout uh, component relative to, to brook trout and, and stocking trout in general. We stock about a million fish in, in total each year. At the end of the day, you know, trying to make sure that, that what we're doing is, is the best um, for, for our native, native fish. Here's the thing, and you, and you think about it, uh, there's, uh, I guess, a lot of personality types out there. Whatever you like to do, you, you dig into it a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. So it goes to the point, well, okay, I'm, I'm catching fish on flies. Maybe I should start making flies. 
and then it just get, it just kind of evolved from that process. <laughs> but you have a passion for it, and, and you know, and a desire for it, and that's kind of what led it continue to lead up to the point to where it got to where I was tying commercially. I was tying for fly shops, tying for guys, tying for people. So that's kind of what led up to this point. But it just manifested, man. It just grew. The, the financial impact of 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 trout fishing in, in Western North Carolina is just huge in general. Jackson County is kind of unique for a couple reasons. We're, we're the first place in the United States, and we're still the only one as far as we know, that has an officially designated fly fishing trail with 15 unique spots and kind of got the map right there just blowed up. I mean, it's cool. So people can come here and, and, and go through that process and, and find a place to fish. Jackson County got the proclamation from the House and Senate as being the official trout capital of North Carolina. It's one of the numbers that, that was brought to the table uh, was how big of an economic impact is, is, you know, fly fishing or trout fishing. And there wasn't one county specific that I saw, but the one that, that I did see was, was for Western North Carolina. And last year, it's $174 million that was brought into Western North Carolina due to, to the trout fishing. Now keep in mind, what, what does that entail? Probably you start looking at license fees, you start looking at uh, you know, potential guide trips, um, you start looking at uh, obviously maybe some fly sales, tippets of leaders. Um, every once in a while somebody forgets their boots, eh, they need a pair of boots or they want a pair of waders or they upgrade while they're here. Lodging, uh, the, the, the hotel industry, the cabin industry, <laughs> uh, food industries, so your culinary uh, aspect of it, so hotel services industry. They're only going to fish a certain amount of part of the day. Some of them get out and they go, to, they go visit other businesses in town and stuff. So it really impacts a lot of people. Getting people to your area, getting them to come here and giving them a reason to come here and then another reason to come back. You know, they got to want to come back. So we have to do a good job of getting them back. And those people who, <clears throat> who don't realize that, that a lot of their business or some of their business could be coming from fly fishing, um, I think they would be appreciated, <laughs> appreciative of it if they knew how much of it, it it was. So there's quite a few people that that it does affect income directly um, here in this county. So it's something to be taken seriously for sure. My name is William Williams. I've been a fly fishing guide for almost a year now. I love what I do because I get to be outside and I get to take people out into the places that I enjoy. My name is Noah Smith. Nanhala Kennels is uh, my business. Um, I do obedience training and uh, training on pointing dogs and retrieving dogs. I keep uh, setter bird dogs and uh, I uh, chase trout in the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, if the trout died in Jackson County, um, our tourism trade would crash. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the people that build their lives around here, the vast majority of them build them off the tourism trade and specifically centered around trout fishing. If all the trout died, uh, that just wouldn't be able to happen. Let's say that the fishing industry ceased to exist for Jackson. Let's, let's say we didn't have, let's say we didn't have the fly fishing trail and we, we didn't have these great fisheries. Let's look at it from that perspective. I think you would look at a different outcome. I think you would look at businesses would be different. Would we be here? Odds are probably not good that we would be here. Would we as individuals still fish? Yeah, we would still do our stuff, but it would just be something that we did. It wouldn't be f from the point of, of taking people out and stuff because that opportunity would cease to exist, which actually is a negative impact as far as, once again, fly shops don't employ a lot of people, but, but they do have a pretty good impact on the local economy based on the people that work there, the money that they spend in their local areas and things of that nature and the business that are brought in. So you'd have less people coming here to, to, the, to the county just to fish. Rentals and all those things like that would be less. It would be less popular. So if you look at it from that standpoint, there might be one fl local fly shop. You know, there might be one guide business per se. So it, would, it, would be a, it would be a huge negative impact for sure. We, we wouldn't be here. I'll tell you that right now. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be here. We can keep it from happening by educating them and taking care of what we got. Yeah, if, uh, if an angler um, finds a diseased fish, uh, sees something that looks suspicious relative to the fish, or has any questions, uh, uh, absolutely 
uh, feel free to contact us. Um, either contact one of our biological staff directly. Um, we also have a, a, a link th on our website where you can submit observations. Um, but, but the key is to, uh, to let us know. And uh, if you can, take a photograph. Take some notes, maybe even mental notes of, of where you were. But if you can, if you have that picture or a description, but picture certainly helps in letting us know, then we can follow up on it. Um, trying to save the fish in terms of you know putting it on ice or doing anything like that um, is is not necessary. Uh, there's a big risk if something is infected. Uh, if you try to do the good thing and and save it or move it somewhere um, maybe now there's a there's something that uh, that's that isn't wanted now is maybe in another watershed so the simplest thing to do is just uh, to note what you found let us know and, and and put the fish back and then we can come back and and sample and do a thorough assessment the big thing is making sure that folks are cleaning their gear drying their gear uh, and, and certainly not moving, not moving fish around or fish parts. Uh, that'll go a long way and help prevent the spread of what we have today and, and the things that, that we're not even talking about that, that may be on our radar uh, five years from now. We need to protect it. I want to be selfish for me and my family and, and my kids and so on and so forth and, and so on for everybody else's family. But I think we need to protect it for each other. He was fast. He won most of the time they do. I mean, that's fine though. They always win. They should win. Facing down with a grin. I've been in the city too long. Sidewalks and buildings and singing sad songs. Now I'm back up where I belong and in the mountains again. I can't live on flat ground.